What is the mood? What are clients telling you at this point in the year? Um, I think at this point in the year, as usual, they are very curious. They are cautiously optimistic uh, that we are entering into a phase uh, of the world which is a little bit more stable than last year. Uh, interest rate, monetary easing, uh, all these are relatively benign. Uh, so investors are looking to deploy. Uh, and of course, with the MSCI inclusion step increases last year, uh, global institutional investors want to look at A shares very carefully, more broadly, more deeply as well. And on the corporate side, uh, a lot of multinationals uh, which have either invested or are thinking to invest uh, are thinking about the foreign ownership limits being relaxed uh, and trying to make China work better for them. So I think there are good uh, potential dialogue both on the institutional side and on the corporate side. So a year when more capital was deployed as you say, at the institutional side, some of those corporates, but also on an individual level as well. We know investors have been holding cash back. you think that deployment is going to pick up in 2020? I think so. Um, so UBS is the largest wealth manager uh, in the world, uh, and in this part of the world, they're all looking at potentially how to make more money in a very low interest rate environment. So whether it is a uh, bond, uh, we are going to expect another very big year uh, for offshore bond issuance. Uh, but also they are also looking for ways to grow onshore in China as it becomes easier to invest in the domestic capital markets for foreign institutional and individual investors. So for UBS then, if you take all of that into account, what do you expect to be the biggest drivers of revenue across the investment banking business in the APAC region this year? Um, I think the, you know, traditionally for, for uh, UBS, I think Australia and China are our two biggest markets. Uh, we expect the, the picture to be broadly the same, um, but China for sure is going to get a lot of attention this year. Uh, and I think our key strategy theme is to be global and local. Uh, we need to serve the global clients very well, uh, but we also need to be here on the ground to offer them differentiated service, whether it is our research, whether it is our corporate access. We need to do things for them that no other local houses or foreign banks can do. Do you expect M&A activity to pick up? Uh, I think so. It is both two ways, both inbound and outbound. I think for those who uh, have existing presence in China, they would reevaluate. So, for instance, we helped a large U.S. insurance company last year uh, to increase their stake uh, in their existing uh, China subsidiary last year because the over, uh, foreign ownership limits has come down. Um, we uh, also helped uh, uh, be a company to restructure their China operation uh, because they want to grow bigger, faster by partnering up with a Chinese uh, major conglomerate. So these are the type of themes, either for those who have already been in here already or alternatively are now thinking about entering China. And what is the IPO pipeline looking like? I think it's uh, decent. Um, it will surround the, the, the same sectors which have been very attractive for investors like the new economy, like consumption, uh, healthcare. I think those will be the key sectors. Um, now, valuation-wise, people have to be realistic uh, because, you know, after uh, the types of WeWork type of issue, uh, investors will be a little bit more cautious. They won't be buying anything and everything. Uh, but with that, I think the good companies will definitely come to the market. So we are very uh, hopeful for 2020. There was some breaking news a couple of minutes ago from one of your major competitors, Goldman mm. Sachs, in terms of adding headcount mm. in the mainland. What are your priorities for expanding the business here in China? Um, so we have been in China for a long time. Uh, our domestic securities uh, uh, subsidiary, UBS Securities, we have been operating that for 12 years now. Uh, we raised to 51% at the end of 90, uh, 2018. Uh, so we have already have a substantial presence, but definitely over the next uh, medium term, I would say three to five years, we think that business will continue to grow. Um, and particularly for the banking side, uh, I think we will definitely be adding headcount as well going forward. What kind of numbers are we looking at in terms of headcount additions? I, I think, you know, from a three to five year medium term view, uh, I would say, you know, doubling that is, is quite achievable. Doubling that headcount yes. within the next three to five years? That's right.